Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll be talking about the NDB or the non-directional beacon. So I won't talk about the theory of operation and stuff. I will just talk about how to read an ADF and the numericals you can get in the exams. Already, it's gonna be a very, very long video. I don't want to make it longer by talking about the theory a lot. So, NDB is a beacon on ground and the ADF is the equipment we have in the aircraft. So, this is the ADF and the beacon on the ground is the NDB. NDB stands for a non-directional beacon and ADF stands for the automatic direction finder. Now what happens is that an NDB transmits signals in all directions from the ground. That's why it's known as a non-directional beacon. And when the airborne equipment or the ADF when tuned to an NDB's frequency indicates the direction of the NDB. So these signals go to the aircraft and the ADF indicates the direction where the NDB is with respect to the aircraft. Now what we as pilots see on the ADF equipment is the relative bearing of the beacon and it is displayed on an instrument known as the RBI or the relative bearing indicator. So this is the RBI. It has a compass card that is fixed with north set at the nose of the aircraft. So here we have the north which is set at the nose of the aircraft and this compass card is fixed. Now what this orange needle shows is the relative bearing of the NDB station from our aircraft. Now what is relative bearing? So relative bearing is the bearing of the beacon with respect to the nose of the aircraft. So let's say this is an aircraft and we are flying towards that direction. Okay. Now we have a beacon over here. So the relative bearing of this beacon will be the angle it is making with the nose of the aircraft. So this is the nose of the aircraft and the angle this beacon is making. So this angle will be the relative bearing. Now relative bearing is always measured from the nose of the aircraft and that too in the clockwise direction. So in this case the yellow angle which is approximately 130 degrees will be the relative bearing of the station. Okay. So let's say we are tracking to an NDB. So let's say this is the NDB and our aircraft is over here. So we are tracking to this NDB. So what will be the relative bearing of the NDB from the aircraft? So it will be zero degrees because that is the angle between the nose of the aircraft and the bearing. So this angle will be zero degrees. So that's why the relative bearing is zero or 360 degrees on the ADF. Similarly, if you're tracking away from a beacon, so let's say the NDB is here and we're flying in this direction. So now the relative bearing of the NDB with respect to the aircraft will be the angle between its nose. So this is the nose and this is the bearing of the station, correct? Right? So this angle, which is measured in the clockwise direction from the nose of the aircraft to the bearing will be the relative bearing which is 180 degrees in this case. So here my RBI will show 180 degrees, which is the relative bearing of the station. Okay. So RBI or the relative bearing indicator is always indicating the relative bearing of the station from my aircraft. Okay. So this needle always points towards the relative bearing. When we are tracking to a station, it is pointing at 360 or zero degrees. And when we are tracking from a station, that means away from a station, then the needle is pointing towards 180 degrees because the relative bearing is 180 degrees. Now, let's say this is our aircraft. It's flying a heading of 030 degrees magnetic. Okay, so this is the magnetic heading. So that means it is measured from the magnetic north pole. So let's just consider this to be the magnetic north pole. Okay, so 30 degrees magnetic means that the angle from the magnetic north pole is 30 degrees. Perfect. So we are flying at a heading of 030 degrees magnetic. And now let's say the NDB station is over here. So what will be the relative bearing of the station? So it will be the angle which my nose of the aircraft is making with the bearing. So this is the bearing line to the station. 
and the angle between the nose of the aircraft and the bearing is this okay so let's say the relative bearing is 90 degrees now if you watch the previous video you would know what is qdm so qdm is the magnetic track to the station right now in this case my qdm or the magnetic track to the station will be this angle measured from the magnetic north to the bearing that's correct right so here what i can see is that my qdm is nothing but the sum of my magnetic heading and the relative bearing so here i can see that my qdm is equal to the magnetic heading which is 030 degrees and the relative bearing which is 090 degrees so what my qdm comes out to be is 120 degrees for this situation Okay, so you can note down this formula, which is very, very important to find the magnetic track required to the station. Because if we want to go to the station, we need to track the QDM, right? So this formula says that QDM is equal to the relative bearing plus your magnetic heading. Now, this formula is very, very important for numericals. So I want you to remember this. Okay, QDM equals magnetic heading plus relative bearing. Perfect. Now, before we move on to the numericals, Let's look at what happens when we are tracking inbound or outbound from a station. Awesome. So now let's say this is our station and we are tracking outbound. So we are tracking away from the station. So this is the aircraft and it's going in this direction, which is opposite to the station. So now when I'm on this track, my ADF will read this angle, right? Which is the angle between the nose of the aircraft and the bearing to the station. So my ADF will be reading 180 degrees, which is the relative bearing. Now, let's say I got winds from this side and I did not correct for these winds and my aircraft got drifted over here. So the relative bearing now will be the angle between my nose of the aircraft, which will be again this and the bearing. So let's make this bearing now. So this angle between the nose of the aircraft and the station will be less than 180 degrees. Yeah, we can see that it's less than 180 degrees. So here the ADF reading will be, let's say 170 degrees. Okay. Similarly, if I had winds from the other side and if I got drifted towards this side of the track, my ADF reading will again change because now the bearing to the station will be this line. And if I measure my relative bearing, it will come out to be more than 180 degrees. So the ADF reading will probably be 190 degrees. Okay, so you see, if we are going on track, our ADF is 180 degrees when I'm going outbound. If I get drifted towards the left or towards the right, my relative bearing changes. Okay, similarly, if I talk about tracking inbound, so let's say this is the station and we are tracking to the station. So what will be my relative bearing now? Since the station is right in front of us, the angle between the nose of the aircraft and the station will be zero degrees, correct? So my ADF reading will be zero degrees. Now, let's say I got drifted on this side of track. So what will be the ADF reading now? So this will be the nose of my aircraft and this will be the track to the station, correct? So now the angle between the nose of the aircraft and the bearing to the station will be this angle. So this angle will probably be 350 degrees. Yeah. So that will be my ADF if I got drifted towards the right. Similarly, if I got drifted left of track, my new bearing will be this. And the angle which this makes with the nose of my aircraft will be this angle. Correct. And this will probably be 10 degrees. So my ADF needle will point towards 10 degrees. Okay. So the idea here is that my relative bearing is always measured from the nose of the aircraft and in the clockwise direction to the bearing that is towards the station. Okay. And whenever we are solving questions, just make sure you draw a picture like this because it's always easier when you have a pictorial representation. 
Okay, so now let's come back to the RBI. So now there are two types of RBIs. One is a type where you can move the compass card. So in this one, we have a heading knob. So this knob which you can see over here is the heading knob. And I can use this knob to move the compass card. So this whole card changes and I can move it to set any heading over here. So I set whatever heading my aircraft is flying over here. So in this we can set our current heading to the RBI and then check the relative bearing of the station with respect to our current heading. So you know this is easier as we can directly get the magnetic bearing to the station with respect to our aircraft's current heading. Okay, so in this we can use the heading knob to set our aircraft's current heading to the instrument so that whatever relative bearing we get is the relative bearing with respect to this current aircraft's heading. Okay, the other type of RBI is a fixed card RBI. So in this we are not allowed to change the compass card. So here we always have north aligned to the nose of the aircraft. Now to find the magnetic bearing to the station in this RBI, we have to find it by using the relative bearing and our current aircraft's heading. So now this is a manual task and we have to use the formula which is relative bearing plus magnetic heading equals QDM. Okay, now to make our lives much easier, what they did was that they introduced another instrument which is known as an RMI. Now what an RMI does is that it automatically rotates the compass card to represent the aircraft's current heading. So here we don't have any knobs for the heading, but this card moves and it sets the heading of our aircraft automatically over here. So again, whatever the relative bearing is there is with respect to this heading so that we don't have to do the manual calculations like we had to do with the fixed card RBI. Okay, now in an RBI, we just look at the head of the needle and it shows the track required to the station. So the head of the needle will always show the QDM. Now, since the head of the needle is showing the QDM, the tail of the needle will show the QDR because it's obviously opposite. QDR is the magnetic bearing from the station, which is exactly opposite of the QDM. So we look at the tail of the needle to find the QDR and the head of the needle to find the QDM, okay? QDR is also known as the radial. So in this case, if I look at the green needle, my aircraft is on a radial of 355 and the QDM is 175 degrees. Perfect. Now an RMI can have either one or more than one needles. So usually there are two needles. In this also you can see there's one green needle and there's a thicker yellow needle. So one needle is for the NDV and the other needle is for the VOR. Now let's just ignore the yellow needle for now because we'll talk about VORs in our next video. So we'll talk about this needle in the next video. Perfect. So I hope you understood everything till now. Let's now look at the type of questions which can be asked from this navigation aid. So there are all these type of questions which can be asked in the exams. Now let's talk about them one by one. So the first type of questions will be drawing based and can be solved if you properly draw whatever is given in the question. So let's look at a couple of examples on drawing based questions. Okay, so this question says that an aircraft on track 360 degrees magnetic experiencing a drift of 10 degrees by winds from east is crossing an NDB abeam track on its right. What is the heading of the aircraft and the ADF reading? Perfect. So we know what is the track. So the track is 360 degrees. Let's plot it. So 360 is over here. So an aircraft is on this white line. Okay, it's following the track. Now, it's experiencing a drift of 10 degrees by winds from east. Okay, so it's going towards the north and it's having winds from the east and the drift is 10 degrees. So let's say these are the winds. And because of these winds, the aircraft has changed the heading by 10 degrees. So he has probably turned into winds and this angle is 10 degrees which is the drift. Perfect. Now, this aircraft is crossing an NDB, a beam track on its right. A beam means exactly 90 degrees. So the aircraft is crossing an NDB on its right. So let's say the NDB is over here. Now it wants us to tell the ADF reading and the heading of the aircraft. Very easy. So to find the heading of the aircraft, 
we know the white line is 360 degrees and the aircraft is holding a drift of 10 degrees. So the aircraft's heading will be 010 degrees. We'll just add 10 degrees to 360 degrees and it comes out to be 010 degrees. So the heading of the aircraft will be 010 degrees. Now, what is the ADF reading? So the ADF reading will be the relative bearing. Now, what will be the relative bearing of this station? So it's nothing but the angle between the nose of the aircraft and the station. So we have to find the red angle. So here what we know is that this whole angle is 90 degrees because it says that the aircraft was flying a track of 360 degrees and it's crossing an NDB abeam the track on the right. So that means the angle is exactly 90 degrees. From this 90 degrees, we know that this is 10 degrees and we have to find the rest which is this angle. So this angle will obviously be 90 minus 10 degrees which is equal to 080 degrees. So this will be my relative bearing and this is what the ADF will show. Okay, so the heading of the aircraft is 010 degrees and the relative bearing or the ADF reading will be 080 degrees. So let's now look at another example of the drawing based numericals you can get. So this says that an aircraft is on radial 200 degrees, flying a heading of 230 degrees true with variation 7 degrees west. Find ADF reading. Okay. So it says a radial 200 degrees. Now what is a radial? Radial is the magnetic bearing from a station. So let's say this is the station. Radial 200 would be somewhere over here. Because this is 180, this is 270. So 200 will be somewhere in between. So let's say that is my radial 200 degrees. Now radials are always magnetic. So this is magnetic. And it says that my aircraft is flying a heading of 230 degrees with variation 7 degrees west. So since I'm given a radial which is in degrees magnetic and the heading is in degrees true, I should convert this heading to magnetic. How do I convert heading from true to magnetic? I use the variation. So my magnetic heading will be 230 plus 7, which will be 237 degrees. So my aircraft is on a radial of 200 degrees and the heading is 237 degrees. So the aircraft will probably be facing this side. Heading 237 degrees. So what does the question want is the ADF reading. And what is the ADF reading? ADF reading is the angle between the nose of the aircraft and the station. So he wants to know this angle. Now, how do I find this angle? So the blue line was 200 degrees and the aircraft heading was 237 degrees. So that means the angle in between is 237 minus 200, which is 37 degrees. And this whole angle is 180 degrees. Now the yellow angle will be 180 minus 37 which is equal to 143 degrees which is my ADF reading. Okay so these were some questions which are based on drawing. You'll only be able to answer these if you know how to draw whatever is given in the question and to draw whatever is given in the question you need to know what the question is saying. So just read the question properly and draw whatever you can from that question. Only then you'll be able to solve the drawing based numericals. Perfect. Now let's look at the next type of questions you can get. So the next type will be formula based. And the formula here will be this formula, which is magnetic heading plus relative bearing equals QDN. So I'll solve a question on this. And if you understand that solution, I'm 100% sure you'll be able to solve any question of this kind. Okay. So this is the question. And it says that an NDB is on a relative bearing of 316 degrees from an aircraft. So here we have the relative bearing of the NDB. Now we're given the following things. So the compass heading is 270 degrees, deviation 2 degree west, variation at aircraft, variation at station, and we have to calculate the true bearing of the NDB from the aircraft. Now before we start solving this, you need to tell me what this means. What is the true bearing of the NDB from the aircraft? What is this Q code known as? True bearing to the station. So this is known as the QUJ. 
So we are supposed to find the QUJ in this question. If we're given the compass heading, deviation, variation, and the relative bearing, we need to find the QUJ. Okay, so first of all, in this question, I see a thing that is very stupid, and it is the heading which is given to us in compass. So we have the compass heading and we have the deviation. Let's just convert it to magnetic heading. So if we use CDMVT to convert from compass to magnetic, I use the deviation. So the deviation is 2 degree west. Now the trick for deviation was deviation west compass best. Yeah. So the magnetic heading comes out to be 268 degrees. Okay. Now we have the relative bearing and the magnetic heading. So the relative bearing was 316 degrees and the magnetic heading is 268 degrees. So what can we do with the magnetic heading and the relative bearing? We can find the QDM. So QDM is equal to relative bearing plus magnetic heading, which in this case is 316 degrees plus 268 degrees. So this comes out to be 584 degrees. Now 584 degrees does not exist. So we subtract 360 from this and it comes out to be 224 degrees, which is my QDM. So 2 to 4 degrees is my QDM. Okay. And what is QDM? So QDM is the magnetic bearing to the station. And I'm supposed to find the QUJ, which is the true bearing to the station. So QDM is the magnetic bearing to the station. QUJ is the true bearing to the station. Yeah. Now to convert from magnetic to true, what do I need? I need the variation. So in this question, I have two types of variations. Now, which one to use? So since we're talking about an NDV where the receiver is on the aircraft, which is the ADF. So the ADF is the receiver which receives the signals from the NDV, right? So the receiver is in the aircraft. So which variation will we use? So we use the variation at the aircraft. So we will use this variation of 30 degree east. Now, similarly, if we were talking about a VOR, so in a VOR, you'll see that the receiver is on the ground. So in that case, we use the variation at the station and not the variation at the aircraft. Okay. So here we'll use the variation at the aircraft, which is 30 degree east. So we had the QDM. The QDM was two to four degrees. To find the QUJ, we just need to convert magnetic to true. So magnetic was two to four degrees. To find the true, we use the variation. So the variation is 30 degree east. Now the variation trick is variation east magnetic least. So variation 30 degree east magnetic should be least. That means my true will be more. So what will be my QUJ? The QUJ will be 224 plus 30 degrees, which is 254 degrees. This is the QUJ. So you would have noticed that we have used everything that we did in the previous videos as well. So just a side note for you is that make sure you've watched the previous videos because everything is connected in navigation, not only in navigation in all aviation subjects. So you should know everything. Yeah. So if you have understood this type of example, solving these formula based numericals will be very easy for you. Okay. So let's move ahead. Now the third type of questions will be on applying the one in 60 rule. So, the 1 in 60 rule is used for off-track calculations. It says that for every 60 nautical miles traveled in a straight line, one nautical mile off-track will give you a track error of 1 degree. I know this is a lot of information for you. So let's look at it with an example. Okay, so let's say I was flying from place A to place B and the track from A to B is 360 degrees. Okay, so I started flying from A towards B and 60 nautical miles later, I realized that I've ended up over here. So I'm off track by one nautical mile. So the distance between the track and my aircraft is one nautical miles. And the distance between place A and my position is 60 nautical miles. So I've gone 60 nautical miles out from A and I've ended up one nautical mile off track. So according to the one in 60 rule, the track error, which I'll have will be one degree. 
So this is the one in 60 rupees. It says that the angle between your track made good and the required track will be one degree if you end up one nautical mile off track after traveling 60 nautical miles from your place of departure. Okay, so by using this one in 60 rule, you can actually find the track error if you know these two distances. So if you know your distance off track and if you know your distance gone, you can find the track error. So that is how this rule is used. Okay, so I'll make a separate video on the one in 60 rule later. But for NDB numericals, you just need to know this formula that is derived from the one in 60 rule. So what this formula says is that your distance off track upon distance gone when multiplied by 60 will give you the angle. Okay, so distance off track by distance gone into 60 equals angle. So let's look at an example to understand this formula. So this question says that an aircraft is on track 300 and heading 300 from A to B. So this is our track of 300 degrees because obviously this is 270 degrees which is west, right? So this will be 300 degrees. So our aircraft is on this track from place A to place B. Yeah. So it says that the total distance is 135 nautical miles. So this total distance is 135. And after 90 nautical miles from place A, the aircraft's ADF tuned to the NDB of place A reads 190 degrees. Okay. So when the aircraft was leaving from A to B, which is this position, the aircraft's ADF would be reading 180 degrees. Yeah, because the angle between the nose to the station. So it is 180 degrees. Now it's saying that after 90 nautical miles, the aircraft's ADF is reading 190 degrees. So that means that our aircraft is somewhere over here. Because if you look at the relative bearing of this aircraft, so this will be the nose and this will be the bearing to the station, right? So the relative bearing will be more than 180 and we can say that this is 190 degrees. So in the question it says that after 90 nautical miles from A, the aircraft's ADF shows 190 degrees. So this distance will be 90 nautical miles from A to the point where the aircraft is off track. So now we are supposed to find the aircraft's off track distance and the direction in which the pilot should turn to get back on track. So the direction in which the pilot should turn is very, very straightforward. So the pilot should turn left to get back on track. So that is done. So in which direction? So this is left. Now, what is this off track distance? So to find this off track distance, I'll use the formula distance off track by distance gone into 60 equals my track error, which is the angle. So distance off track is unknown equals track error is 10 degrees. Why is it 10 degrees? Because when the aircraft was leaving, the ADF was 180 degrees and after 90 nautical miles, the ADF became 190 degrees. So that means there's an angle change of 10 degrees. Okay. So the track error is 10 degrees into distance gone. So distance gone is 90 nautical miles and divided by 60. So if I solve this, 3 twos are 6, 3 threes are 9, 2 fives are 10. So distance off track comes out to be 15 nautical miles. So our aircraft is 15 nautical miles off track and it should turn left to get back on track. So if you're wondering how I got this, so I've just cross multiplied this part. I've kept DOT on one side. I've multiplied distance gone into track error and 60 in the denominator. So our aircraft is 15 miles off track. Now if we move ahead, there's another formula which is used in a lot of questions. And this formula says, that the time required to the station is equal to 60 into time change divided by bearing change. And this time change should be in minutes. 
so there are not many questions on this formula but you never know what comes up in the exams so you should know how to solve these type of numericals as well because i personally remember getting this kind of a question in the exam so make sure you don't skip anything from the syllabus now let's look at a question on this so determine the fuel required to fly to an ndb station if the change in wing tip bearing is 10 degrees and the elapsed time between bearings equal 8 minutes the rate of fuel consumption is 11.8 gallons per hour okay so we have the change in wing tip bearing which is 10 degrees and we have the elapsed time between these bearings which is 8 minutes so we'll just use the formula and the formula says that the time to reach the station is equal to 60 into time change in minutes which is 8 divided by bearing change which is 10 so this time comes out to be 48 minutes now looking at this we can say that our aircraft will take 48 minutes to reach the station and we are given the fuel consumption which is 11.8 gallons per hour so this means that in one hour the aircraft burns 11.8 gallons so this means that in 60 minutes the aircraft uses 11.8 gallons so in 48 minutes how many gallons will it use basic unitary method so this comes out to be 11 decimal 8 divided by 60 into 48 which is equal to 9 decimal 44 gallons so to fly to the ndb station the aircraft requires 9.44 gallons of fuel okay pretty straightforward so just make sure you remember this formula okay so the next type of questions come on intercept angles so what is an intercept let's say i was tracking outbound on the radial 010 degrees so this was the station and i was going out on this radial which was radial 010 degrees so I was going out and then the ATC called me and wanted me to track outbound on radial 030 degrees. So what he wants is that instead of going out on 010 degrees, I should now go out on 030 degrees. So if this is radial 030 degrees, the ATC wants me to turn right and track out on this new radial which is radial 030 degrees okay so the ATC wants me to intercept this new radial intercepting means changing the radial to something else so earlier I was on 010 degrees now I intercept radial 030 degrees to track that now what is the intercept angle so the intercept angle is the angle which my aircraft makes with the new radial while intercepting it so when i was intercepting this new radial the angle that my aircraft made with this station is the intercept angle so this angle between the nose of my aircraft and the station will be the intercept angle okay so let's now look at a question on this so it says that an aircraft tracking towards the station on heading 060 degrees magnetic is asked to track inbound on radial 100 degrees. Now, if the intercept angle is 30 degrees, find the initial heading in degrees magnetic and the ADF reading on intercepting the new track. So here the aircraft's heading is given to be 060 degrees. So let's say the aircraft is heading in this direction and it's tracking towards the station. So the station is probably over here because the aircraft is tracking straight at a heading of 060 degrees towards the station. So right now the aircraft is on this radial. Okay, to find which radial is this, we'll use the heading. So the aircraft's heading is 060 degrees, which is taking it straight to the station. So this is 060 degrees. And what is a radial? Radial is the exact opposite of this. Now to find the radial, we'll just add 180 degrees to the heading. So the radial comes out to be 240 degrees. Now, 
the aircraft is asked to track inbound on radial 100 degrees. So what is radial 100 degrees? Radial 100 would be somewhere over here. Yeah, because this is 09 is 0 degrees. So 100 will be a bit right of that. So now the aircraft is asked to fly inbound on radial 100 degrees. Now inbound on radial 100 means that if I extend this radial 100, the aircraft is supposed to fly like this towards the station. Okay, so this means that you're flying inbound radial 100. Inbound means coming to the station. Okay, so my aircraft was flying inbound on radial 240 now is asked to fly inbound on radial 100. So what the pilot does is that it turns left and it intercepts this radial 100 to fly inbound to the station. You understood this? So now in the question it says that if the intercept angle is 30 degrees, find the initial heading in degrees magnetic and the ADF reading on intercepting the new track. So we are given the intercept angle to be as 30 degrees. So when my aircraft was intercepting this new radial, it would be looking like this. Yeah. So it turned left from radial 240 and went straight towards radial 100 to intercept it at an angle of 30 degrees. So this is 30 degrees. Now what we are supposed to find is the initial heading and the ADF reading. So let's find the initial heading first. So if I was on a radial 100 degrees tracking inbound, what would be the heading of my aircraft? So if I look at this aircraft, what is my heading? The heading is 100 degrees. Yeah, because the radial is 100 degrees. This is a radial of 100 degrees. So this is 100 degrees. But when I was intercepting the radial, the intercept angle was 30 degrees. So if you compare this aircraft with this aircraft now, you can see that the heading is 30 degrees less in this aircraft. Yeah. So what is the heading of my aircraft? The heading of the aircraft is 100 minus 30, which is 70 degrees magnetic. Understood? Next. What is the ADF reading on intercepting the new track? Now, how do I find the ADF reading? So the ADF reading is the angle between the nose of my aircraft and the track to the station. So it's this angle. And how much is this angle? It is 30 degrees because that is my intercept angle. So the relative bearing to the station also comes out to be 30 degrees. So heading is 70 degree magnetic. And my ADF will read 0, 3, 0 degrees, which is the relative bearing. Okay, so I hope you understood this question as well. Let's look at the last type of numericals which you can get. And these are the instrument based numericals. Okay, so in these type of questions, you'll get a lot of diagrams of the RBI or the RMI. And according to the question, you'll have to choose which is the correct representation of the information that's given in the question. So let's now look at this question. So in this question, you have four RMIs and there's a situation in the question. You'll have to choose which RMI is indicating that situation correctly. Okay, so before we read the question, let's talk about an RMI. So in an RMI, we see the heading of the aircraft, which is over here. Then we have a needle. So the tail of the needle shows us the radial or the QDR and the head of the needle shows us the QDM. You remember? So now let's look at the question. So it says that an aircraft is tracking away from an NDV on a track of 0 to 3 degrees true. Okay, so this is in degrees true. The next thing that says in the question is that the drift is 8 degrees port and the variation is 10 degree west. So let's just convert the track which was in degrees true to degrees magnetic by using the variation. So variation west, magnetic west. So the track equals 0 to 3 plus 10 
which is equal to 033 degrees magnetic. So this is the track. Now we know that an aircraft is tracking away from an NDV on this track. So let's say this is the NDV. A track of 033 would be this. This is 033 degrees magnetic. So our aircraft is somewhere on this track and it is holding a drift of 8 degrees port. Now 8 degree port drift means that our port wing is ahead of the starboard wing by 8 degrees. Yeah, you remember drift from the previous videos? So if our aircraft is on this track holding a drift of 8 degree port, the diagram would look something like this. So this aircraft is actually going in this direction but holding a drift of 8 degrees. Now what is drift? Drift is the angle between the heading of the aircraft and the track. So this angle will be 8 degrees. Yeah. Now the question says that which of the RMIs illustrated below shows the correct indications. So to find the correct indication, the first thing we need to know is the heading of the aircraft because an RMI represents the heading of an aircraft. So we know that this magenta arrow was a track of 033 degrees magnetic. Yeah, and our aircraft's nose is 8 degree right of it. So what will be the heading of the aircraft? It will be 033 degrees plus 8 degrees, which is equal to 041 degrees magnetic. So this will be the heading of my aircraft. Yeah. So the next thing we need to know to identify an RMI is the QDM. So how do I find the QDM? To find the QDM, I need to know the relative bearing and the magnetic heading. Because I have this formula that says that my QDM is equal to the relative bearing plus magnetic heading. So now I have a magnetic heading of 041 degrees. Let's find the relative bearing. So in this situation, the relative bearing will be this angle, which is the angle between the nose of the aircraft and the track to the station. Now, I know that this whole angle is 180 degrees and this blue angle is 8 degrees. So the white angle will be 180 minus 8 degrees. So my relative bearing will be equal to 180 minus 8 equals 172 degrees understood now if i use this formula i'll be able to get my qdm so my qdm will come out to be the relative bearing which is 172 degrees plus my magnetic heading which is 41 degrees and this is equal to 213 degrees so this will be my qdm okay so now I have two things and these things can identify the correct RMI reading for me. So the first thing is my magnetic heading. Now I look at the RMIs I have and will look for an RMI which is showing a heading of 041 degrees magnetic. So this does not have 041 degrees, not this, not this, but yeah, this has a heading of 041 degrees magnetic. The angle just below the triangle is 041 degrees. Okay, so now the next thing I want to look is the QDM. So the head of the arrow should be at 213 degrees and it is almost 213 degrees. So this is my QDM 213 degrees and the heading is also 41 degrees. So the correct answer will be delta. So it is this RMI which is representing this situation correctly. So that is how you solve an instrument based question on the NDV. I hope you've understood this as well. So that was all from my side from the NDV. Okay, so if you have any doubts, any questions, just feel free to put it in the comment section or hit me up on Instagram. You can always DM me. I try and reply as soon as possible. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys.